recording now? Okay. All right, uh, this afternoon we're uh, going to be looking at Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9. Before we do that, why don't we, uh, why don't we pray first? Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for being together this afternoon, Lord, and uh, the reading of your word. We just pray, God, that your Holy Spirit be with us as you are. Uh, to give us the word to speak, Lord, and our hearts would be open to the reception of your word. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're there, or hopefully almost there, uh, we're in Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9. We're going to be looking a little bit at God's people while they were in the time of uh, time of wandering in the desert. Uh, something that's probably well known to us even when we were in Sunday school. Um, the, the Israelites wandered around through the desert. In this particular episode... Uh, is actually not that well known. Even to myself, I hadn't really, uh, was not as well known with this particular episode, but there's actually New Testament ties to it that are actually going to show us how even Christ uh, makes connection to this particular episode for, for really for the sake of the gospel. In verses 4 through 9, we read, They travel from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea. Uh, I'm reading from the New Test, uh, I'm sorry, the NIV version, if you don't have one of those, to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the desert? There is no bread, there is no water. And we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on the pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, he lived. Amen. That's God's word. As I said a minute ago, what we do is we find God's people wandering around the desert. In this particular region, I wish I had a map to show you, uh, they were close to a place called Edom. Uh, they spent most of their time already wandering around. It's been 40 years. And they wanted to kind of take a shortcut. They wanted to go through this place uh, really, uh, what they called, in if you see there in verse 4, they're kind of coming around there, they're going to Mount Hor. Okay, but before that, you have to look back on verse in chapter 20. Okay, If you flip back just a page with me, you go to chapter 20, there's actually a plea from Moses to the king of this kingdom in, in Edom. And it's actually a very nice plea, and there's a particular reason for that. And that's because these Edomites were actually brothers. They were a brother nation descended from Esau. And so they cannot invade them. They cannot just go in and kill them. Uh, really unbeknown to most of us, most of us think of the Old Testament as the Israelites going in and killing these people, wiping out these people. Well, this is the brother nation, which probably has ties to modern nations today, brother nations with the, with the Jewish people. And so he has to make a plea. He has to say, can we kind of you know, cut through here? Is that okay with you? And uh, the Edomites do not allow them to do that. And so, you know, if you've been walking around for a long time and it's hot and you're thirsty and you have all these different problems, to have to take the long way around somewhere is not pleasing, okay? And so, it kind of makes sense that there's grumbling. Now, it makes sense on one level and then on this other completely different level, it really does not make sense. Uh, and the reason for that, let me explain, is because, like I said, they've been wandering the desert for 40 years. Okay, there's an episode that's well known to everybody which happened much earlier in Exodus where the people grumbled, and they grumbled so loudly that God made them wander the desert for 40 years so that they would die off. And the point we're reading right now in Numbers, they've died off. This is actually the next generation. These are their kids, and which really kind of gives us a startling view of really family dynamics to an extent. You know how that old saying that we don't want to become our parents. Well, guess what? We end up becoming our parents. And these folks end up becoming their parents. The very same words that their parents said when they grumbled to God they now repeat to Moses and to God, which is just a horrible shame. It's not the first time that they've done it either. If you look with me at, in chapter 20, uh, at verse 2, they're grumbling in this part about water. It says, Now there was no water for the community, and the people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. They quarreled with Moses and said, If only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord! Exclamation point there. That's how strong they feel about it. They wish they were dead. Why did you bring the Lord's community into this desert? And we and our livestock should die here. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to this terrible place? There is no grain of figs, grapevines, or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. And notice what happens next. Moses and Aaron, then they go to the assembly, they go talk to God. And this is actually a very well-known episode where Moses takes his staff and breaks the rock and water comes out. And as you may or may not know, what ends up happening is God becomes upset with Moses. 
Because really what should happen is Moses should just spoke into the rock and water was going to come out of it. This same episode, there was actually a very similar incident in Exodus 17. You don't have to look there, but in Exodus 17, I'll read it to you. You had a very similar incident where the people were crying out about water. And in that episode, the same thing happened. But look, look at the, there's a big difference here. Uh, in Exodus 17, around verse 2, it says, So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? For the people were thirsty for water, and they grumbled. And they said, Why do you bring us out of Egypt and make us and our children and livestock die out of thirst? Notice the very same wording. Okay, this is a generation earlier. Their kids are saying the same wording and another generation later. In verse 4, Then Moses cried to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And what I found remarkable is, here in Exodus 17, a generation ago, okay, Moses was pleading with God, like, what, What's up with these people? Okay, To kind of put it in, in, in a modern term, like, They're ready to kill me. But if you look in Numbers, 40 years later, it's no longer like, oh, I can't, you know, it, now it's like, I can't stand these people. And so I kind of feel for Moses a bit for striking this rock, even though he was in disobedience. <coughs> But it just gives you the sense of gravity of annoyance, stress that had been built year upon year upon year. And not only that, but the old generation has died out. And now we have this new generation who's continuing the same problems. There's parallels here. That first generation wanted water. God treated them well and then received it. This first generation wanted, this wanted water. He treated them well at first. But in the second incident, which is where the passage we uh, read in chapter 21, if you look there, this is actually now the second incident where they're grumbling against God. God doesn't just take a light note. Okay? God now decides to strike them, to show them his wrath. And the way he does it is through these venomous snakes. Now, a lot of us would think, well, you know, all of a sudden, like, snakes started dropping out of the sky. That's not the truth, okay? you got to remember they're in the desert. There's scorpions. There's snakes. There's all sorts of problems. And, and so here's the thing. God, this whole time, had been taking care of them. In other words, he, he had been their pest control. Okay? The Lord Almighty Yahweh Pest Control. Okay? That was the company that they were attributing to. And he was keeping all these creatures at bay. Okay? And they should not have taken that lightly. And so that gives us a sense there. In disobedience, okay? in the time where we are grumbling against God, you know what? God may just take away his hand and allow you to struggle. God may take away the thing that he's protecting you and allow you to do more. Which is, you know, we go through life and we go through difficulties and we grumble. And we have this little saying in our modern times, right? Well, you know, it could be a lot worse. Well, here's the truth. It could be a lot worse. And God takes out his hand and makes it much worse to make his point. And so when the people, you know, realize, wow, there's snakes out here, <laughs> all right, which they've seen, and they start getting bit by them, okay, this punishment, okay, makes them, helps them to realize that they have sinned. And notice the confession of the sin here, which is necessary. In verse 7, the people came to Moses and said, we sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Okay? We sinned when we spoke against God and against God's messenger. Okay? And they realize this. And notice that they're, going, they're not going directly to God because they know that God's not going to hear their prayers. They're going to the man who is their leader because they hope, they just hope, please, God, listen to Moses' prayers and free us from this sin. Free us from this problem that we're in now, that we, we, we're being bitten by snakes and we're dying. And I find the remedy to be something absolutely remarkable. To tell you the truth, the first time I read it, I was like, this is bizarre, okay? Because these are the same people who, when they came out of Egypt, okay, and Moses went away to, you know, make the law. You've probably seen the old Charlton Heston movie where he goes out into the mountain, okay? And what are the people doing while he's on the mountain? They're making a calf, and everybody's dancing. You know, they fall into idol worship. So I thought, well, this is strange. Why would God tell Moses to make an idol, okay, or make a bronze snake and put it on a pole. And mind you, you know, this is a huge nation. So in other words, this had 